Well, what's up, Mob Crew? I'm Chris, and today, today's missing person case is Don. Also, today's person of interest is Olivia. Today's missing person case is also today's missing person case is Courtney. What's up, Mop Crew? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Chris with Monsters Under Our Bed. I cover murder, mystery, to the paranormal. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, before we get started with uh, the recent developments in this voice comparison, um, I'd like to feature the missing. So we'll quickly do that, and then we'll get into today's show. So real quick... And just a shout out to Tony. He says, what's up, Chris? And I was working with you last week. Send me a message with your number if you have any drone questions. Hope to see you again soon, sir. Lost is not alone. That is Tony from EquiSearch. Um, we are working with him and his team out there looking for Dylan Rounds. And they're, um, they're just amazing, amazing people. Um, taught me so much. And if anybody's going to find Dylan, it would be them. They are such hard workers, uh, relentless. And so it was an honor to go out there and uh, watch how they work and actually get to work alongside them. So a uh, big shout out to EquiSearch and their team. Uh, that was truly an experience I'll never forget. So thank you so much, Tony. Honored to have you in the show. Let me get my uh, chat caught back up here. If you can hear me okay, please put a one in the chat. Just make sure volume's okay. Uh, we got Frank Meister in here. Shout out to you, buddy. Good to see you. Good afternoon, y'all. All right, so let's uh, quickly cover the missing. Let's get that over there so you guys can see it. So this is uh, Libby Grisham. Uh, she was last seen on September 19. Of this year missing from Reno Nevada she's just 13 years old blonde hair blue eyes 5'1 and 81 pounds uh, Libby may still be in the local area she has multiple tattoos so anybody in Reno or in Nevada uh, please look out for Libby uh, if you have any tips please call 1-800-THE-LOST that is 1-800-843-5678 and we've got one more um, let me get caught up here on my chat. Um, Tom, man, let's get this party started. Hope everyone's having a beautiful Sunday. Thanks for doing this before the presser. Let today be the day. Thanks you so much, Tom, man, for the 10 bucks. Yes, sir. Okay, one more, and then we'll uh, get started with the uh, analysis here. So this is Amber Ray Johnston. I think I featured her once before. Uh, she was last seen in August of last year at her apartment in Bullhead City, Arizona. Uh, her boyfriend left around the same time and went back to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Amber was supposed to be on a Greyhound bus, also headed for Myrtle Beach around August 16th. She left all her personal belongings at her apartment. Her last Facebook posting was a video of her on the bus. Uh, there's no, there has been no social media activity 
and she hasn't been seen or heard from since. Um, it says Amber was acting very paranoid uh, the months prior to her disappearance and was it and was using drugs. If you have any information, please call the Bull City Police Department at 928-763-1999. Uh, she is 36 years old, blonde hair, blue eyes, 5'6", 160 pounds. That's Amber Ray Johnston. So, all right. Uh, okay. Yes, I will be streaming the press conference with Steve from True Crime Web. Uh, me and him are going to do a show. Uh, we'll probably start a half hour early because uh, it starts at... 10 a.m. So we'll probably go live about 20 to 30 minutes before. So, yeah, we will. And that's going to be early tomorrow. So um, especially early for me because that's two hours. I'm two hours um, behind. Okay, so let's get into today's show. So quickly, let's just quickly recap who uh, what's happened in the last few days. And then we'll get into the analysis. That way people can uh, start kind of coming in here. So. Let's just uh, start with uh, just an overview of Richard Allen, who was arrested on the 28th, 28th or 29th. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 28th. Okay. Should have went with my gut. Okay. So he's 50 years old now. He would have been either 55 or 54 at the time of... I have to be covered with the word red rum, so I'm just going to try to avoid that word. Uh, YouTube has been a stickler with that word lately, so um, of this terrible crime that happened. Um, we don't know his exact height. There's one where it says he's 5'4", and another that says he's 6 foot. He's clearly not 6 foot. I would say probably 5'4 to 5'6", in my opinion, just looking at him standing next to the billiard table or pool table. He's 180 pounds approximately, blue eyes. Uh, when he was younger, he had short, dark brown hair. Now he has uh, gray gray hair with a mustache and goatee. One of the biggest things, his address was just right there, uh, right by the Monon High Bridge, just five minutes away. Wouldn't take him long to get there and get back <clears throat> without even being, you know, if it, depending on how long this crime took place, um, you know, uh, he, he could have done it within a couple of hours and probably no one even noticed he was gone. He lived at this uh, residence from 2006 to current. So he's lived there for at least 16 years. Um, his prior residents that I've looked up are in Indiana. One was in Monticello and uh, what was the other town? but close by. So he's lived in Indiana. I don't know most of his life, but uh, his adult life. Uh, he was born on September 9th, 1972. Uh, we did look a little bit more into this Craig H. Ross Renfro. Um, there is a guy, oops, there is a guy with that name on Facebook, Tom N. Shout out to him. He's been doing a lot of research behind the scenes for me. Um, and he did find a Facebook page with that name. Uh, that guy lives in Monticello. We're not going to look at his Facebook page because he, he probably may not have anything to do with this, I'm sure. Could have been uh, a friend when he lived, when Richard lived in Monticello. And maybe that's where he came up with this alias. But I still got to look into that. So, um, Then so this all kind of took place on October 17th where... Law enforcement showed up and they started uh, digging in the flower beds, looking for multiple items. Um, there is some speculation that um, I just came across, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, of what they also could have been digging for, which actually could make sense. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But uh, what certainly they found something, and so they would arrest him at his work at CVS on the 28th. He does own a silver Dodge Ram 1500. It's a 2013. Um, oh, what was I going to say about this silver Dodge Ram? Uh, 
this is what it looks like. This is not the actual vehicle, but this is uh, the same year and model. So this is the, the truck he owns. So he did work at the CVS store. Um, there was some updates. Uh, apparently, so I found something, uh, an ex-employee or a former employee, I should say, that worked alongside Richard. Um, we'll look at that here in just a second, but it was really uh, kind of interesting the way uh, they interacted with Richard and how they viewed him. Uh, he blended right in. Uh, so he was a less licensed pharmacy tech, but they said he was also kind of like a shift manager. And we'll uh, we'll look into that real quick. Um, hey, Tony. Hey, Chris. It's nice working with you this week. Nice things you're doing out there. Hope to see you again soon, sir. If you need anything, reach out. Boss is not alone. Thank you so much, Tony, for your donation, $10. That is Tony from Equisurge. I got to work with him and his team uh, looking for Dylan rounds. Um, they are amazing, and I learned so much. So it's it's an honor. So um, got Monkey Mar in here. Thank you so much. Shout out to you. We got Umno Thanks. Happy Sunday, Chris and all. Thanks, buddy. Good to see you, Doug. Like I said, we'll get into the voice comparison in about five minutes. I just kind of wanted to do a recap of everything. <clears throat> but uh, here's something kind of new that I came across. Let me uh, make sure you guys can see that. So this is somebody that worked with, uh, which, you know, we heard he also goes by Ricky and Rick. So apparently they worked with him for eight months. So it says... So to quickly disclaim, I'm not going to reveal anybody's name that did or still works at that CVS location. What I can say is that I've been seeing a lot of speculation on who he really was and any and if anybody knew anything about who he was. I did not personally interest myself in his outside life, but I did work with him at the CVS from July 2020 to April 2021. I'm just gonna write that down real quick. Um, so 2020, 2021. Okay. I of course did not work at the CVS anymore, and as others have stated, they were told to reply no comment in response to any questions related to him. To clarify as well, Rick was a ship supervisor, RX. He did have a license, but was only really a backup technician if needed. He was mostly either the shift leader or a shift support when he worked. Yeah, when he worked. I was a shift supervisor during my time there, and I personally worked with him every time we had a truck for the week, if not three to four times a week. Rick was the first and unfortunately the most. So this is what's interesting. So this is talking about who... Uh, Rick was around people. Rick was the first and unfortunately the most polite and cooperative person to work with. He did a great job hiding in plain sight. It does not shake me. It does. Oh, excuse me. It does shake me a bit that I was alone with him. Lots of shifts. But in my opinion, the only story I ever heard about Rick's past at the time was that he was a recovering alcoholic. Which is interesting, because uh, if he worked with him from 2020 to 2021, that's three years after this terrible thing happened. So did he become, you know, an alcoholic because of what took place? Uh, oh, interesting. Okay. He was a recovering alcoholic, went to an institution sometime prior to me working there, and he had worked at... Ooh, interesting. He had worked at a Walmart for a few years. I only kind of proofread this, so I didn't read the whole thing. Interesting. Rick never pinged under anyone's radar because he was literally one of the nicest and joking people working there. He didn't seem paranoid or afraid of anything. So, of course, anybody who wasn't the police couldn't piece it together. I'm still pretty shocked on how close I was to him considering what we just found out. Um, and then it just talks about who he is. Uh, 
So that's interesting. Now we don't know if, if this is 100% true or not. So we'll kind of lean this towards speculation right now. We can't really vet this. I, I sound sincere. Um, but it does line up with someone else saying that he did go into a mental facility. Uh, would make sense. So that's kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, definitely blend it in if that's true. Uh, polite and... Uh, we do see that video of him at the billiard playing pool and then he starts dancing around because he made a bunch of shots. So it's pretty wild. Just looking at the, um, yeah, we'll have to check out the Walmart. Uh, so moving along. So there's one correction I needed to make real quick. So um, cause yesterday, uh, I said it was, uh, Becky Patty that got the, um, photo, uh, the sketches, copies of the sketches from Richard. Apparently that's Tara German, Tara German, who was the one that came in the store and got the, uh, copies of the sketch of BG. So I did want to make that correction. Uh, Tom says, I'm not sure if this is just coincidental. I think the news on the gas station may have been bogus. I say this because the gas station is exact halfway point from his home to CVS where he worked. Yeah, it's right there. I mean, everything's just right there. Um, as we've learned from Steve from True Crime Web, uh, they can lie to us. So thanks, buddy, for the uh, 10 bucks. All right, got a little dizzy right there. So there's him sitting uh, at the bar where the young guy's sketch is literally just like 10 feet from him. Uh, okay, there's one more thing. So I did also want to correct this little thing too as well. So this is on the left, obviously, a picture of Richard's daughter when she was approximately 21 uh, on the Monon High Bridge. This is before the murders. Um, it was posted, uh, apparently it was posted on Facebook after the murders, but everybody was telling me after the show that this picture was taken before before what happened, and then they, uh, the mother maybe had posted after. But what's interesting is Libby and uh, his daughter do have kind of the same hair length, blonde um, body type, so... Could that have been a motive, possibly? All right. Um, so this is interesting. This is him with the horse. And this is apparently a picture of their dog. We know there's also a picture of him with a cat uh, on his back. So I also heard that they... Now, this is just speculation until uh, we can vet this, but... I heard that they were also digging in the flower bed or whatever they were digging at the yard for possibly a pet to get the DNA or hair because we uh, learned from the uh, warrant from uh, Ron Logan that they, uh, there was possible animal hair. So that would make sense. So that could have been what connected Richard to the crime scene is the... Uh, the pet hair, which uh, makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much, uh, Hearts. Welcome to Light the Way. Thank you so much for uh, becoming a member. You're so awesome. So now that we've got quite a few people in here, let's take a look at this voice analysis. Okay. Let me... All right, so just to kind of show you... What we're looking at, I've got a basic free program. It's Audacity. Uh, it's something I use a lot uh, when making my videos. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with this uh, program. One of the one of the things you can do is um, so as you can see here is and I'll just play it real quick here. Oops. <laughs> So this right here is just the guys down the hill. This is what it kind of looks like. Let me zoom in a little bit here. 
So as you can see, that uh, the lines aren't really full. They're pretty just narrow. Um, and that's just guys down the hill right here. Um, this next one is uh, everything that I could take from the video where he's uh, on the tram going down. Um, I edited out all the stuff that has like his wife talking and it's just all the words that I could get just with him in it. Um, let me quickly just get this real quick. Exact as in seven, uh, 0.75 miles from home and 0.75 miles from his work. He has to pass it every time he goes to work. He knew that they was on to him, I think. Yeah. You're, you're talking about the Marathon gas station passing. Yeah, thank you so much for the five bucks, Tom. Tom has been doing a lot of research, so uh, please show him some love in the chat. He's been helping me out. And thank you so much, Jennifer, for the dollar super sticker. Okay, so... Okay, so I know you can't hear it that well, um, but you're going to be able to hear it. This is just what it looks like normally when you just put it into this program. Now, what I did is this is something that I do when I record for my regular videos, not my lives, but just my normal videos. And what I do is, so this little clip right here is Guys Down the Hill. Oh, let me highlight it right there. So this little part right here is Guys Down the Hill. And this is the same thing. So what I did is I run some filters. And what it does is it compresses it. And then it expands it. And it gives it more body. And so that way uh, you can hear a lot of the highs and lows. And so that's basically what I do for my videos. And so that's what I did here. So as you can see it's a complete uh, 180 from. Uh, there's a lot more to the uh, the audio. So I'm going to go ahead and play what it sounds like just the down the hill with uh, it having some more body to the audio. And then here is Richard talking with, uh, with now it's got the body to it. The world shark coming up. Okay, the snap. There's the world shark coming up. So as you can hear, you can. There's a lot more body to it. It's a lot. Uh, you can hear a lot of things. So now I'm gonna kind of play some of those together. And then there was one word in particular that I felt like was the closest match, because like I said, we're working with four words from BG, guys down the hill. So it's not a lot to work with. And then with Richard talking, um, I probably have like eight to ten words, somewhere around in there. Obviously, none of them are guys down the hill, but um, I did try to uh, put a couple of words together that were close enough. So thank you so much, Michelle, for the $1.50 super sticker. All right, let's get into uh, them put together here. The world's short coming up. The world's coming up. The world's coming up. The world's coming up. Okay, so this is the word that I thought uh, stuck out the most. And this is where he says cables. And I thought cables and guys, because he kind of says cables. As you can kind of see, um, this is this little line here is where it says cables. As you can see, it kind of it's really high pitch along with guys, which is down here. So uh, let's put those two together. I think this is the closely, the closest word that I can match with uh, the four words that we have to work with. Kids, 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 kids. I, I think that's pretty darn close. Kids, 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 kids. What do you guys think? So yeah, that's the closest, that's the best word I could work with was cables and guys. Uh, the rest of the words, I, I'm sure I could maybe find one or two other words and try to match them up with down the hill. But I think uh, uh, guys 
and cables was the closest like i said it's got the highest uh pitch to it and we'll, we'll listen to it one more time uh love your technology approach guys sounds like yeah thanks tom i said it's not a lot to work with we got four words from bg and then you know eight to ten words obviously when he's saying guys he's what maybe 70 feet away from the girls maybe a little closer um and then down the hill is when obviously he's escorting the girls so he's next to him so it's it's you know it's not going to be you know exact and then you're working with two different environments he's he's outside when he's saying guys down the hill um when he's talking with uh his wife in the tram it's enclosed the audio isn't going outside because it's bouncing off the you know whatever the tram container uh the ride so you know you're working with a lot of variables but i'll, I'll play this all the way for you guys one more time from the start so here is it without any of the filters the world shark coming up. Cable snap. Where's the world shark coming up? The world shark coming up. The world shark coming up. Cable snap. Where's the world shark coming up? The world shark coming up. Cable snap. Where's the world shark coming up? Cable snap. Where's the world shark coming up? Cable snap. Where's the world shark so I think that's a pretty close match. Like I said, it's um, it's not a lot to work with, but it's it's better than what I had yesterday. I, I you know I just didn't have enough time because I just got back from a five day trip uh, looking for Dylan rounds, so I was kind of uh, short on time. There is a voicemail recording of him out there. I'll find. Oh my gosh, yeah. If you guys have any other audio, I know that there's the audio of him. Uh, with the fireworks, but unfortunately I can't use it because he only says two things here. We'll play the video real quick. But unfortunately when he's talking, the, the kids are talking. Let's look at that. Uh... Let's make one. Don't, do it. Don't do it now. Not yet. Oh, yeah. So he says not yet, but you have the kid kind of like... Um, Kind of complaining, and it's going over is not yet, so it's really. Don't do it! Don't do it now! Not yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so unfortunately, that one I can't work with. But um. Oh my gosh, Amy! I'm an audio technician. I appreciate your approach here. I just started watching, but I'm, I'm good to go back and listen. Oh gosh, I yeah, I am definitely no audio technician. <laughs> um, I just know how to use the program, so um, I am just a novice. You know, I just have experience uh, putting videos together, but um, I appreciate that. It means a lot. I'll play it one more time for you guys. Um, I said it's there's not a lot to work with, but man, if I could get my hands on any more audio, that would be amazing. Especially if I could get the words. Uh, you know, the, cause that's a popular word, the down would be a down and then heel. Um, oops. Becky says, thank you for your hard work on this. I appreciate your time on it. Thank God. One of these babies had the foresight to record. Yes. I just wish they had ran. I despise this disgusting man. I agree. Thank you so much for the $10 Becky. Uh, couldn't agree more. Hopefully that, that video will also help, you know, secure his fate, if he is. Now, let's keep in mind this guy is, you know, innocent until proven guilty. So we got to keep that in mind. Um, but uh, it, it just, everything kind of fits. He, you know, he hid in plain sight. Uh, and then I'm trying to find the research about this whole mental institution that he went to. Um, cause I think that would really, especially if that was right after, uh, you know, what happened, then I think that would definitely, um, will be used against him. 
So I'll play this one more time all the way through for you guys. Okay, the snap. Where's the world shark coming up? Okay, the snap. Where's the world shark coming up? The world shark coming up. Okay, the snap. Where's the world shark coming up? The world shark coming up. Where's the world shark coming up? Okay, the snap. Where's the world shark coming up? Okay, I said it's uh it's about the best I can do with what the words I have now, but um like I said, if anybody can send me uh some more audio. Oh, I just saw something. It, does he say anything in the billiard video? I didn't think he said anything. I thought he did a dance. Let's see. Um Maybe I didn't get the audio of that. Uh, where's that at? Same talking. Uh, pool table. Did I not get the audio of it? Yeah, I'll have to go back and see. But this kind of makes sense with that person that, if that's true, that worked with him. Kind of guy that's polite and was uh, would make jokes. Uh, that does kind of line up with what he was doing right there. Yeah, I'll have to go back to that video and see if I can uh, take any words from that. But, yeah, if you do, especially uh, if there's a voicemail, I would love to get a hold of that. Uh, it's his voice 100. Uh, great job, Chris. Thank you, Lumpy Space Princess. Um, yeah, I think it's close. Like I said, you're working with two different environments. So, uh, until I have the exact words, or at least some of the same words, I think that would be the best way to compare. Especially if he's outside talking, I think that might be the best. The only thing that doesn't make, uh, Makes sense of the animal hair slash DNA is the process time for DNA. Animal hair slash DNA is the process time for DNA. Yeah, I'm not an expert on that. I'm not sure. I mean, with the advancements in DNA technology, uh, maybe it's come a long way with them being able to do it. But yeah, I wish I could find that little. Uh, let's just take a look. If there's any uh, updates real quick here. Oh, let, I guess we'll play this just in honor of Libby. There is audio with the pool table video. Interesting. Well, I will. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have to do it after this live because uh, it, it takes me time because I have to, you know, expand it and do a lot of run a lot of filters uh, to expand the audio. So I will definitely get a hold of that video. I must have recorded it without the audio and just didn't know it. And assume that there was no audio. So that'll be interesting. Especially if there's more words that he says. So. Um, let's see what time is it. Uh, we started at 1130. Let's see if there's anything. Oh Barbara did say one thing. Okay yeah I did want to touch on this. Uh, so she says. Because Barbara McDonald. She's part of the Down the Hill podcast. Um been investigating this uh, since basically day one. So she says, the good news is we've made progress. The bad news is we can't tell you much about it. Superintendent Doug Carter of the Indiana State Police this afternoon. New info coming from investigators Monday in the press conference. 
So um, that was on the 28th. So I think uh, what she was talking about is they couldn't say much about it that day, but I'm sure we'll we'll get a lot of info come Monday. Probably not as much as a lot of people may want, but I'm sure we'll get a reason why they looked into him and uh, why they arrested him. So, um, but yeah, it's just going to do kind of a short live just to show you that audio and, um, I'll get my hands on some of these other audios and see if I can, um, find some other words that I can match up with this. Yeah, justice for I mean Libby. Um, just looking at the comments real quick. Remember when everyone jumped on the pad wagon and said BG was either Tony or Keegan? I think it's happening. Get you. Oh, you know it'd be one because they uh. I mean, the fact that they arrested him I, speaks volumes um, and come out and said that they, you know, this guy is in connection with uh, Delphi. And now they're having a press conference on top of that. I think that speaks volume. But I, I don't blame people for being, uh, you know, cautious because, yeah, we've had a lot of false alarms. Um Let's see if there's anything else. So Tom says he's going to get the voicemail for me. Um, so if I do get my hands on that, I'll probably do just a short upload tonight. And then, like I said, tomorrow, me and Steve are going to go live. Um, we'll probably start half hour early. Uh, it is at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So that would be 7 a.m. Pacific time, correct? So um, set your alarms if uh, that's early for you, because that is kind of early for me. That's 8 o'clock my time. We'll probably start at 7.30, 7.45, something like that, 15 minutes or 20 minutes before uh, the press conference. And then uh, we will uh, go over that, watch it, and then uh, – Steve, being a former law enforcement, he can kind of decipher some of the terminology they may use. So I'm kind of excited for that. And Emma says that'll be 2 p.m. UK time. Oh, so that's that's right in the afternoon for you. That's perfect. Yeah, West Coast just set your alarm. That's right. Yeah, it is kind of early for a press conference. It is kind of early. So... um I missed uh I missed one. Uh thank you so much. Uh holy Phil for the ten dollars. Sorry, I was trying to find it. Um for your super sticker. Thank you so much for the support. So um I'm gonna kinda end it there. Just a short live to kind of show you what uh I did with the audio that I had. Um I wish I would have known about the pool table thing, but uh that'll give me some more stuff. And then if Tom gets me that voicemail, that'd be amazing. And if there's uh, some words, especially match up with down the hill, uh, we'll see if we can get a better, closer match. But um, I think it's pretty close, but there's there's so many variables that you're working with. So I don't think it's going to be exact match no matter what, you know, unless you have the same exact um, process where he's out there, you know, kind of like in a windy environment or high up, I guess you should say outside. So um, real quick before we go, I am going to have, because uh, obviously I just got back from looking for Dylan Rounds. I have tons of footage. I will be doing a regular video for you know uh, all my subscribers, and then I've got tons of extra content for the members. So I should have a, a bunch of stuff coming out for the members uh, here real soon. So um, I love you guys. Have uh, a wonderful rest of your weekend. And we will see you guys tomorrow early in the morning for the live press conference. So uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my show. You guys are amazing. I love you all. We're going to play the pet outro. I will get an updated one here.
within a week or so. So that's it, guys. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, happy Halloween.